Okay, so good afternoon everyone. My name is Devasis Ponda. I am a research scholar and Prime Minister Research Fellow at IIT Guwahati. So, for the July-November 2024, I have been allotted to the course Reliability Based Structural Design as a PMRF TA. And this course Reliability Based Structural Design is instructed by Professor Arunasi Chakravarti, IIT Guwahati. So, what will we do? Actually, I will conduct or I will be conducting the interaction sessions on every Sunday from 3 pm to 5 pm. So, what we will do basically during these two hours, we will solve, you know, tutorials related to the current week uh, topic. Tutorials that can be solved using pen and paper, then we solve the tutorials in MATLABs and uh, uh, you know we will uh, resolve all the queries if you have uh, regarding the assignments and all these things okay so today uh, we will discuss about uh, the module 2 that is also uh, a part of theory of probability where we will first solve uh, problems related to uh, moment generating functions okay let me moment generating functions then we will move to theory of estimation where we will solve problems you know related to point estimate and particularly in point estimate we will solve uh, tutorials related to method of moments and method of maximum likelihood and also we will uh, solve some tutorials uh, related to you know bias and unbiased problems then we will move to goodness of fit test or hypothesis testing so if time permits i will show how these tests are performed uh, using matlab and also i will uh, upload that matlab script along with the uh, along with the uh, problem statements okay so what do you will get after every session so after every session i will uh, uh, upload uh, the video and you will get the link of the recording session and the link of the solve assignments and notes and also the MATLAB scripts, so, uh, whatever we have discussed during or whatever we will discuss during that interaction session, I will provide to you. Okay, so let's quickly start our sessions. Okay. So, first we will uh, revisit that moments of random variable, right? Uh, on the last uh, interaction session, we have discussed about the moments of a random variable like quickly we will recapitulate these uh, sections then we will move to that moment generating function part and all these things okay so moments of a random variable on the last class we have seen that uh, the moments of a random variable can be uh, you know defined with respect to the origin so if a random variable x and we want to define its nth moment about the origin then what we need to do if this x is a continuous random variable obviously we need to integrate uh, the pdf multiplied by x to the power n uh, to the whole domain of the pdf okay so by this way we can find out the uh, moment about origin so first moment about origin we have discussed that it is nothing but the mean of the random variable also we have seen that moments can be defined with respect to mean and then we call the central moment so central moment or nth central moment of a continuous random variable is defined as expectation of x minus mu that means that uh, data is how much dispersed from that mean value to the power n so this is nothing but the moment of a continuous random variable about its mean or we call them uh, the central moments okay so first central moment is always zero and second central moment we call variance and under root of variance we know this uh, is nothing but the standard deviation likewise we can find out other moments or other highest moments like the like the third moment or third central moment more specifically if we want to say the third central moment we can also calculate the third central moment also and fourth central moment so 
uh, now the thing is that we have already seen that these moments are very important uh, to you know quantify the uncertainties in the reliability problem or to have certain you know insights about the data uh, which we have also uh, we uh, gone through the properties of the mean and variance that means uh, the properties of the first central moment uh, first moment about origin and second central moment okay and we have some uh, established some relation between the uh, central moment and the moment about origin okay <clears throat> so today so 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 what we have seen about these moments that uh, when we want to you know estimate the moment we need to solve the integral so this is the one way of finding out the moments now there is another way uh, to find out the moments and that way is from moment generating function now moment generating function first let's uh, quickly go through uh, the concepts like the moment generating function of a random variable how to define the moment generating function of a random variable so the moment generating function of a random variable x is defined by like m subscript x that is the random variable is is equals to nothing but the expectation of this uh, infinite series e to the power sx if it is a continuous random variable then obviously expectation of e to the power xx will be e to the power sx multiplied by the pdf and you need to integrate over the whole domain of the pdf now if we have the discrete random variable so for the discrete random variable we have already seen that the discrete random variables are, are defined with respect to their pmms so obviously we can find out the moment generating function of a discrete random variable and it will be nothing but the expectation of the uh, that infinite series e to the power sx okay now these are the moment generating function of the random variable now if we have the moment generating function with us how to calculate the moments from the moment generating function the, the, this is the next big question so how to find out the moments from the moment generating function right so if we have the moment generating function with us like if we have that mx of x for a certain random variable so we can find out the moments about origin so these are the moments about origin so first moment about origin how we can find out so you just need to differentiate the moment generating function with respect to s and take the value at s is equals to zero likewise if we want to calculate the second moment about origin that is nothing but the mean square so what do we need to do we need to differentiate that uh, moment generating function twice and take the value at s equals to zero likewise we can calculate the higher moments also so these are the moments about origin now if we want to calculate the central moment we have variance algebra formula so by there we can easily calculate the mo the central moments or or, or like if uh, any question ask that uh, find out the variance so you can easily calculate the mean and mean square and we have the formula of variance is equals to we already cal have calculated that variance is equals to nothing but your e of x square that mean mean square minus mean square right so we have actually derived this and uh, also in your uh, course videos that things have been derived okay so let's quickly solve uh, some problems regarding to that moment generating function okay so here the first problem uh, the first problem uh, from uh, your continuous random variable so if if just go through that problem if x is a random variable whose pdf is given okay so the pdf if x of x is equals to e to the power 3x plus 1 by 3 e to the power minus x for the values x greater than equals to 0 and 0 otherwise so first says that determine the moment generating function of x then compute the first moment of x using the moment generating function then compute the second moment of uh, x using the moment generating function and second moment okay these are the moment about origins now 
in a question it asks that compute the second central moment that means you need to find out the variance of x and that is nothing but sigma square so let's solve this problem part by part so first we need to find out the moment generating function of x so what was the definition of moment generating function of x we have we have just seen that it is nothing but we need to take the expectations of that e to the power s x. So here you need to integrate this PDF multiplied with that e to the power s x and over the domain. So here the domain is greater than zero. That means zero to we can go up to infinity. So zero to infinity. This is the your PDF value and this is e to the power s x. So if you solve the integration. So what you will get, you will get that the moment generating function as 1 by 3 minus s plus 3 into 1 minus s. This part as a moment generating function of the random variable which follows this PDF. Okay, so the first question I have solved like how to calculate the moment generating function. Now move to Second question, compute the first moment of x. First moment of x, that means first moment of x about origin. So how we can calculate it? First moment of x about origin. So you just need to differentiate this moment generating function with respect to s and you need to take the value at x equals to 0. Then you will get the first moment, first moment about origin and if you differentiate that with uh, twice with respect to s and take the value s equals to 0 you will get the second moment about the origin so let's quickly solve the second part of this problem so first moment it is nothing but e of x how we can find it out we need to differentiate this moment generating function with respect to s and take the value as s equals to 1 so if you do the der derivation then it will <coughs> be 1 by 3 minus s square plus 1 by 3 1 minus s the whole square now at s equals to 0 if you take the value at s equals to 0 what we will find out that we will find out that the first moment about origin will be nothing but 1 by 3 square plus 1 by 3 that means 4 by 9 and it will eventually come out as 0 0.444 so from the moment generating function we just uh, found out that the first moment uh, is equals to nothing but 0 0.004 now we need to find out the second moment about origin what do we need to do we just need to differentiate this moment generating function twice with respect to s so if you do or if you perform the, uh, the differentiation so you will get uh, that value like minus 2 3 minus s minus 1 and the second part it's a simple derivation you can easily solve it and take the value at s equals to 0 that will give the second moment about origin and that value comes as 0 0.7407 okay now that first two part has solved like first moment about origin e of x we have found out the value 0.444 and also we have found out the mean square value e of x square equals to 0 0.7407 now the, the third question says you need to find out the second central moment the second central moment is nothing but variance of x and we know from the variance algebra Variance of x, we can write it down, is equals to E of expectation of x square, that means mean square value, the second moment about origin, minus first moment about origin, your mean, the whole square. We have also uh, proved that, uh, uh, that, that, that lemma, so already. So just, you, you have E of x square value, like this, and um, you also have the e of x value. So just uh, equate this and you will get that 44 by 81 and that will give you like uh, the fractional part you can easily calculate it. So we have seen that for a continuous random variable if the moment generating function is given then from there we can easily calculate the 
uh, moments value like moments about uh, origin and also we can find it out the central moments now let's quickly solve one problem related to your discrete random variable okay so for discrete random variable here this problem so that was the continuous random variable that means the pdf was given now here uh, the discrete random variable we already have no known that uh, uh, the discrete random variables are defined with respect to the probability mass function so here the probability mass function is given that probability mass function says it will take two values if x equals to 1 the probability mass function will be 1 by 4 and if x equals to 3 the probability mass function will be 3 by 4 okay so the probability mass function of the random variable is given now find out the first question says the found out the moment generating function of this random variable so how we can find out the uh, moment generating function for it so we already have seen the moment generating function for a discrete random variable it's nothing but e to the power sx multiplied with your probability mass function so here it will be a simple um, uh, problem to solve like we have only two values of x so for x equals to 1 just put a e through the power s s first x equals to 1 we put it and what is the value of p x of x it's nothing but 1 by 4 so e to the power s multiplied by 1 by 4 plus now s equals to 3 we have again another value that means e to the power 3x multiplied by 3 by 4 so this is your moment generating function for this discrete random variable so we have found out the moment generating function of this discrete random variable mx of s is nothing but e to the power s by 4 plus 3 e to the power 3s by 4. Now the second question says determine the mean from the moment generating function. Mean that means the first moment about origin. So mean what you need to do? First you need to differentiate that moment generating function with respect to s. So this will be s not t. So d by ds mx of s so if you do the differentiation you will have that it will give you e to the power s by 4 plus e to the power 3s multiplied by 9 by 4. So we can easily calculate uh, the uh, first moment. What do we need to do? We just need to take the value at s equals to 0. Just put s equals to 0 uh, in this equation. So what we will get? We will get nothing but 1 by 4 plus 9 by 4 and it will give you 10 by 4 that means 2.5 the mean value of this random variable which is calculated from the moment generating function comes as 2.4 now determine the second moment from moment generating function this is the first moment about origin now second moment you need to differentiate this function with respect to s twice so it will be s not t so differentiate this function so if i do the differentiation so it will give me e to the power s by 4 plus e to the power 3s and uh, that part 27 by 4 now just take the value at s equals to 1 you will find out the second moment about origin so this is the moment generating function of the um, of the discrete random variable which is given here now we have found out e of x that means the first moment or mean that comes as 2.5 and we also have calculated the second moment about origin the mean square value as 7. Now the third question says determine the second central moment from the moment generating function second central moment from the moment generating function and the second central moment what do we uh, know about the second central moment the second central moment is nothing but the variance so variance we can find out the formula of variance algebra variance of x is nothing but mean square minus mean the whole square so 7 minus 2.5 you will get 0 0.75 okay so by this way if a random variable is given with a pdf we can 
find out first the moment generating function and from the moment generating function we can easily find out the corresponding moments of the random variable okay so like uh, let's quickly go through some well known distribution like if we have binomial distribution we have talked about binomial random variables it is one of the discrete random variable so whose probability mass function uh, is given as that p to the power x 1 minus p 1 by x so if we want to find out the moment generating function for this binomial random variable what do you need to do it's simply we need to take the expectation uh, of e to the power sx so this now when we solve this this will lead to that moment generating function as e to the power s p plus 1 minus p to the power n or or we know for a binomial random variable so there are p and q so q we can write it down like 1 minus p so here uh, you can further simplify the equation like e to the power s p plus q to the power n or, or or you can leave it simple as it is so this is your moment generating function for binomial distribution now from the moment generating function you can find out the moments like first moment you just need to differentiate it with respect to s so this is the differentiation and take the value at s equals to 0 so you will find out that mu that means the first moment is equals to nothing but n and if you find out the uh, mean square value so you will get that np bracket np plus n. now 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 you have the variance algebra and you can easily calculate the variance also so variance will be nothing but the variance will be nothing but uh, e of x square that means this value minus np square value so you will find out the variance also likewise uh, if we have the poison distribution so recall what was the uh, probability mass function for that poison distribution this is nothing but lambda to the power x x factorial e to the power minus lambda that means your poison distribution have only one parameter and that is lambda so uh, if we want to find out the moment generating function for the point join distribution what do we need to do we just need to take the expectation of this with respect to your uh, probability mass function the probability mass function is given here e to the power sx this is your um, that, that infinite series and this is your probability mass function now now if you simplify it what we will get e to the power minus lambda summation over lambda to the power x s whole to the power x by x factorial now recall uh, when we have this kind of uh, series so we can uh, get that it is nothing but that e to the power x or e to the power u series so just look at this format and it will fall exactly in that series format that means we can easily write it down the moment generating function as e to the power minus lambda e to the power lambda to the power x so finally we have got the moment generating function for the poison distribution so poison distribution the moment generating function is nothing but e to the power lambda bracket e to the power s minus 1 now find out the moments first two uh, moment about uh, origin so first mean how we'll get it you just differentiate that probability mass function with respect to s and take the value at s equals to 0 so this is a very simple differentiation if you perform it that you will find out lambda similarly if you want to calculate the uh, mean square value that means second central a uh, second moment about the origin so you just need to differentiate it with rest twice you will get this value and take the value at s equals to 1 so you will find that e of x square is nothing but lambda square plus 1 now if you want to calculate the variance of that variance of x that will be nothing but lambda square plus lambda minus lambda square that means you will have lambda value that means e of x square minus e of x star square so that will obviously give you that value now let's quickly uh, go through this is the exponential distribution now from the exponential distribution uh, that uh, question may ask from that uh, like here what do we know about exponential distribution that exponential distribution will follow uh, 
this uh, probability the distribution function that f x of x is equals to lambda e to the power minus lambda x for x greater than equals to zero values and it will be zero for x equals to less than values. So if you want to find out the uh, the the moment generating function for this f x of x, how we can find it out? So what do we need to do? Just need to perform the integration. Okay. So uh, first we want to calculate the moment generating function. So moment generating function is nothing but expectation of that series. So uh, when we e to the power x multiplied by the uh, PDF of the exponential distribution. So if you solve it, we will get that moment generating function will come as lambda by lambda minus x. Now let's find out the first two moments about origin and then we will solve the variance problem. So first moment is nothing but take the differentiation of that uh, moment generating function with respect to s and equate it, equate it uh, with 0. So what do we will get? We will get the expectation of x is nothing but 1 by lambda and e of x square we get 2 by lambda square. So what will be the variance of that? So variance will be nothing but e of x star square 1 by lambda square uh, sorry 2 by lambda square minus e of x star square that means 1 by lambda square. So you will get 1 by lambda square. Remember uh, when we have you know mm, uh, discussed about the exponential distribution so where that we have seen that for exponential distribution the mean that means first moment about origin is nothing but 1 by lambda right and the variance is nothing but 1 by lambda square please remember this like uh, this will uh, help you solving the assignment problem or the problems uh, in your final exam easily. Likewise, we can find out the moment generating function for different random variables. So here I have added the moment generating function for the standard normal distribution. You can easily solve it or just go through it. Uh, yeah, it is a self explanatory derivation. So you can easily find it out how to calculate the uh, moment generating function and from there you how you can calculate the moments also. Uh, here uh, for the gamma distribution also for the gamma distribution you can calculate the moment generating function like this the gamma distribution follows uh, the pdf of the gamma distribution is nothing but this and from there you can find out the uh, moments of the gamma distribution. Now one more important thing uh, regarding the moment generating function what I have missed to discuss is like when we will not have a moment generating function for a random variable. So we have seen that how to how to find out the moment generating function and from the moment generating function how to calculate the moments. And so now the question is uh, will we every time got the moment generating function? The answer is no. Actually if your moment generating function if the series of your moment generating function is not converged then we will not have any kind of moment generating functions. Like here the problem is given like uh, this for a discrete random variable the PMF is given. Now if you solve it uh, um, the solve the moment generating function of this random variable what we will see that it comes out as 6 by pi square x equals to 1 to infinity e to the power sx by x. Now this series will not converge. That means we will not have any kind of moment generating function for this series. So please keep in mind Okay, so this all about the moment generating function. So do you have any uh, queries related to moment generating function? Please ask me or if uh, these things get uh, you know clear then okay, we will move to the next topic. So just uh, just recall what uh, just we have solved. We have solved problems from moment generating function how to you know formulate the moment generating function and from the moment generating function how we can uh, how we can calculate the moments etc and when we will have the uh, moment generating function and what are the criteria for it 
okay so uh, this is the topic from where uh, the assignments uh, question as well as uh, the final question may come okay so that was the first topic uh, of today so let's move to the next topic so do you have any uh, query so i hope this is a very simple topic uh, you can easily solve it and we have just uh, went through uh, so many problems like eight tutorials we have just seen so i think uh, the problems uh, come from this topic you can easily solve it if you you know watch this video carefully uh, so you can easily solve it so okay now let's uh, let's move towards our next topic okay so now we will discuss about uh, theory of estimation where first we will discuss about the point estimate and we will solve tutorials from the point estimate uh, particularly for method of moments and method of maximum likelihood then we will go to the hypothesis testing or goodness of fit test where uh, we have you know we'll solve problems from chi squared test and case test uh, and also we will solve uh, problems in uh, MATLAB. Okay, so uh, I will show you how to solve these problems in MATLAB along with I will share the MATLAB script with you. Okay, so let's quickly go to that theory of estimation part. What that theory of estimation does and what kind of problems may come from this particular topic. So actually in theory of estimation what we actually do if we have a say population and if we know that population, so population uh, actually uh, tells about uh, the whole data set and all these things. And if we have a population and whose parameters, okay, population will follow some distribution and whose parameters are unknown. And we need to find out and best estimate for that parameter using some samples. So if this is population, whole population, and it follows some, you know, you have some PDF or it follows some distribution whose uh, parameters we need to find out from the samples like small amount of sample x1 x2 x3 dot 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 some sample so so most of the time like we cannot access the whole data of the population yeah, so sometimes it will be computationally uh, computationally uh, it will require time or, 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 or many times we cannot access the data so we have to uh, to to determine or to give the best estimate of the population parameter from the samples okay so here that things are then like if we have some random samples x1 x2 xn and which are drawn from a variable x that means the population variable and the population will follow that distribution and whose parameter theta say let's say uh, theta is the parameter of this population and we need to find out the best estimate of theta say for example the best estimate of theta we say theta n. so how we can find it out so there are like two ways we can either go to point estimate and what is that point estimate does actually point estimate we estimate a single quantity okay that single value okay based on based on the statistics of the samples okay the samples which are drawn from the population we call that function as estimator and the value of the estimator we call estimate okay first we can directly you know uh, give uh, or estimate some value that actually the point estimate does and also we can uh, you know specify some interval where this parameter will lie so do these two ways we can solve uh, that you know um, the, the problem of the uh, theory of estimation problem like problem of the uh, unknown parameters of the population solved using the samples okay so here the main thing in point estimate is like that estimate should be unbiased so there should not be any bias between your estimate now when we call that it is an unbiased estimator when if if the statistics t is an unbiased estimator of the population parameter theta only and only if the expectation of this estimator is equals to the parameter like i will you know tell you in simple way so let's say if the point estimate of a parameter theta is theta so for example 
we have a point estimate for a parameter theta and whose estimator is theta hat. So when we can call that theta hat as a unbiased estimator of theta only and only if expectation of this operator that means expectation of theta hat will equals to theta and this we call that this is an unbiased estimator. Likewise unbiased we need to find out the consistency like uh, when we will you know increase the sample size obviously the error between that expectation of the estimator and theta if we you know uh, subtract the expectation of this estimator minus theta will give you the bias or the error so if you want to minimize the error what we need to do we need to increase the sample size okay so first we will solve some problems from that bias and unbiased problem then we will move to point estimate where we will see uh, two methods the method of moments and method of maximum likelihood and we will solve problems from these two topics so first let's quickly go through that bias and unbiased problem so what i say say like if i have a point estimate of a parameter theta this is the theta this is the parameter of the population which is unknown for which we need to find out a best estimator and if the estimator is theta hat then we call the theta as is a unbiased estimator when when the ex expectation of this operator or expectation of the um, estimator is equals to nothing but your parameter so let's quickly solve one problem like here that tutorial says suppose x is a random variable with two parameter mu and sigma square that means that x follows normal distribution and x1 x2 x2 xn is a random sample size of n which are drawn from the population and which shows that and which has like sample mean and sample covariance now the problem says shows that the sample mean and sample covariance are the unbiased estimator of mu and sigma okay uh, then solve it we have the concept when we call a bias, unbiased estimator unbiased estimator so first what do we need to do we will go to simple uh, sample mean because the question says that you need to find out that uh, whether your sample mean and sample covariance are the unbiased estimator or not so what do we know about sample mean already on the previous class we have solved problem related to sample mean so sample mean is nothing but sum the samples divided by the number of samples okay so this is your sample mean so if you want to prove that the sample mean x bar is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu what do we need to do we need to take the expectation of the sample mean so expectation of the sample mean now let's solve it so expectation of 1 by n summation of uh, x to the power i now 1 by n uh, it's a fixed quantity so outside of the expectation and expectation of summation of x i so what we will get 1 by n multiplied by n times of mu mu why mu because expectation of x i will nothing but will give that mu value so finally we have find out that mean so expectation of the sample mean is equals to the mean of the random variable that means your sample mean is an unbiased estimator right okay now what about the sample variance so here you know to check uh, whether like we have seen that sample variance s square we have open right like 1 by n minus 1 summation of n uh, i equals to 1 to n xi minus your mean square now here yeah, there is a question like why we put 1 n minus 1 why not n okay so let's start with if the sample variance was uh, calculated like this 1 by n into this quantity so what will happen so if you solve it what will say that that will give you the value n minus 1 by n into sigma square that means your expectation of the sample variance if the sample variance is calculated using 1 by n formula instead of n minus 1 
so it will not give you the variance or sigma square value of the populace that means it is an bias estimator so what will be the unbiased estimator of sample variance this if you put instead of n n minus 1 and solve this you will find it out it will give that e of s square is nothing but sigma square so this is the unbiased sample variance and sample mean we know the sample mean e of x bar or x bar we already have calculated and e of x bar has come up as that means for the sample variance n minus 1 summation of xi minus uh, that sample mean that square that is the unbiased estimator of the sample variance now uh, many problems uh, may come from this uh, concepts like here we have you know five concrete cubes are tested and the compressive strength are recorded so first compressive strength 22.8 27.4 25.5 26.4 and 29 now what the question says calculate the unbiased standard deviation of the strength of the concrete cube unbiased standard deviation okay say unbiased standard deviation and mean so what do you need to do first you need to find out the mean of this sample so how we can find out the mean just sum all the samples and divided by the number of samples so here we have five samples so sum them up divided by five so we have got got that sample mean is 26.22 mp or newton per mm square now 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 just few minutes back we have seen that uh, for sample standard deviation the unbiased sample standard deviation is nothing but uh, unbiased sample standard deviation is nothing but uh, the under root of unbiased sample variance and what is that 1 by n minus 1 summation of i equals to 1 to n xi minus mu s the square okay so if you solve this what we will get we will get that standard deviation is 2.31 mp so by this way you can find it out the you know unbiased sample variance and also sample means and if uh, if in a question asked that what is the standard error in sample mean estimation it is nothing but sigma divided by root mean so here for this also you can calculate okay now let's solve one more problem like here we have z1 z2 to z9 these are the random samples from a population okay having mean mu and variance sigma square okay so we have some samples z1 z2 to z9 which are drawn from some people population and that population have two parameters mean and variance now consider the estimator of mu consider the estimator of mu that means mean and verify which one is unbiased estimator of mu so here two estimator are given theta 1 and theta 2 now you need to find out which one is the unbiased estimator for mean and mean only mean value so what do you need to do what we have just seen that if the estimator is unbiased then obviously take the expectation of the estimator that will give you the parameter if it is giving the parameter then it means it is an unbiased estimator and if it is not giving the parameter exactly so we call it an bias estimator so let's see which one is your unbiased estimator so if i take the expectation of theta 1 what will we have expectation of z1 z2 to z9 that means expectation of uh, total each and every sample has expectation of mu so what we will have how many samples are there uh, i think seven so so we will have seven a mu divided by 8 that means it gives us 7 by 8 mu that means not directly giving us the mu now for the second estimator let's see what is has given so this is e of z1 okay not x1 that will be e of z1 now uh, for the second case what we will have so the estimator e of theta 2 if we take the expectation here the expectation so e of theta 2 if we take the expectation what we will have found 6 mu 
minus mu minus mu minus mu divided by 3. That means 3 mu by 3 and which will give you that means E of or expectation of your this random variable will give you the unbiased estimator of the e. So, this kind of problems if uh, this kind of problems may come I hope now you know the process uh, how to deal with them and uh, how to deal with them how to solve them uh, okay so now if you have any doubt regarding that uh, biasness and unbiasedness problem just ask me or we will move to our uh, next topic method of moments like one of the method to calculate the best point estimate okay so just go through it uh, and tell me if you have any query or not just quickly recapitulate it okay so let's quickly uh, move to our let's quickly move to our next topic okay so chandan are you there okay so uh, last we will uh, discuss about if there is any problem okay so let's uh, move to the next uh, topic and that is the method of moments now method of moments it's one of the method to find out the point estimate so in method of moment what we generally do we just equate the population moment with respect or with a uh, sample moment okay so in uh, method of moments what do we do that we equate the kth population moment. So, what will be the kth population moment? If your population follows this PDF with parameter theta, so the kth population moment will be nothing but x to the power k f x of x theta to dx. We oh, already have seen this for k is equals to 1 to a uh, on to n or uh, or, or 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 the higher order moment up to which we want to take the moment now what is the sample moment it's nothing but you need to sum up all the samples divided by n so therefore uh, if we equate that two we can easily find out the parameter of the uh, of the population like let's solve one problem then this thing will get more clear Like here, just go through the problem. The time to failure of a electric circuit in hour obtained from a random experiment on eight samples are given below. Great. So, so what that says? Okay, we have an electric circuit in uh, the failure in electric circuit and the data we have. Now, if the random variable, that means the population follows the exponential distribution, estimate its parameter. We have some samples drawn from the population and the population follows exponential distribution. Now, how we can find out the uh, uh, estimate for that parameter lambda? So, we know that exponential distribution, the PDF of the exponential distribution is nothing but f x of x equals to lambda e to the power minus lambda x for all values of x greater than or equals to 0. And if uh, we have values less than or equals to 0, that will give you 0 value. First, what we need to do? We need to find out the sample mean from these 8 samples. right? So, how we can find out the sample mean from this 8 sample? We just need to add all these samples divided by total number of samples. So, it will give you 21.65. Clear? Now, what will be the population moment? So, here we have the population distribution. And we know that for exponential distribution what is the population moment or if we have the pdf it's nothing but 1 by lambda so we have that population moment 1 by lambda and sample moment is equals to 
six five. Now equate this to. You will get the value of lambda. That means e of x is equals to that is equals to one by lambda. So the lambda will nothing but one by twenty one point six five. Now solve it. Let's see what the value is coming. One divided by twenty one point six five, and it comes as zero point zero four six two. Right. So by this way, we can calculate the parameter. It's simple. We just need to equate the kth population moment with kth distribution moment. Like the concept. What is the concept behind it? Like if we increase the sample size, and one at at once, or at the limiting condition. your population moment will be equals to your sample moment great uh now let's move to our next problem like here we also have a random variable x okay now this x actually follows this distribution like the pdf of x is given where uh, there is one parameter that theta So if x of theta will be equals to lambda plus one x to the power lambda for all values of x greater than equals to zero, and there are samples like one, two, three, four, five, six, six samples are there. Now again, the problem is to find out the parameter theta. So how we can find out the parameter theta? So first, what we need to do? We need to uh calculate the population moment so how we can calculate the population moment the population pdf is given so e of x will be nothing but here greater than equals to that so 0 1 that x multiplied by lambda plus 1 lambda to the power x dx now if you solve the integral you will get that expectation of x that means first moment or the first population moment will comes as lambda plus 1 divided by lambda plus 2 now what will be the sample moment here we have how many samples are there we have 1 2 3 4 5 six six samples are there so first sample moment how you can calculate it just sum them up divide by one uh, that six number so it will comes as 65 now equate this to that means e of x your population moment is equals to your sample moment now if you equate that to you will get that lambda is equals to nothing but 0.86 so using method of moments we can find out the uh, parameter of the population from the samples how is just equating the sample k sample moment with k population moment okay now here there is a problem is like as many as parameter we need to solve as many as equation okay that much of equation we need to solve if we have one parameter we need to solve one equation like here we have one parameter we need to solve one equation so if we have n number of parameters we need to solve n number of equations so do you have any doubt uh, regarding that uh, method of moments otherwise we will move to next method to calculate the maximum likelihood estimate so let's quickly you know go back and see that do you have any doubt so we can we can discuss or else uh, we move towards our maximum likelihood estimate so do you have any any any, any doubt okay so now we will uh, discuss about that maximum likelihood estimate it is one of the uh, you know famous uh, point estimate method to 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 identify the population parameters from samples now in maximum likelihood estimate what actually uh, happen or what actually we do so if like if we have a random variable x and whose pdf is given as like if x of x with that parameter theta so why theta is the unknown parameter 
Now, if we have samples like x1, x2 up to xn, so first we need to define the likelihood function. Then the likelihood function actually define like this. Likelihood of the parameter theta with respect to the samples is defined as nothing but you need to multiply the PDF of each sample with that parameter up to how many you have samples. So it will lead to what this leads to and pi operator. That means the likelihood function of a parameter theta given your uh, variables x1 to xn is nothing but pi operator 1 to n your pdf now our task is to maximize this likelihood function to get the estimator of theta so how we can maximize it just derivate or just uh, differentiate just differentiate this likelihood function just differentiate that likelihood function with respect to the parameter like here only one parameter are there but maybe the, there may be more than one parameter that's why the partial differentiation is used and you also can check this criteria however the you know uh, the, the the likelihood estimator give uh, the maximize or not and give you that result or not so what we actually do here first we need to formulate the likelihood function then we need to maximize it maximize it that means you need to uh, differentiate that likelihood function with respect to the parameter and equate to zero then you will find out the parameter of that distribution now this is the likelihood function now we can take log on both sides like likelihood can only have the positive values so we can take log on both sides what will happen so that uh, uh, pi operator will become the summation operator and we can again maximize the value differentiate with respect to uh, the parameter and equate to zero that will give us the estimate of that parameter so let's quickly solve uh, some problems so that these things get more clear so here find out the maximum likelihood estimator of theta here the random variable x follows this pdf the pdf of the random variable x the pdf of the random variable x is given that means the pdf of x and that random variable has only one parameter and that is theta theta is the only one parameter for the distribution okay and if the values x greater than 0 we will have this value otherwise zero so first we need to formulate the likelihood function what will be the likelihood function it's just we have seen that you need to multiply each and every probability density function with the parameter for the samples so it's nothing but that just introduce the pi operator over your f x size now if you solve it your uh, f x that was 1 by like pi of i equals to 1 to n you need to solve it 1 by theta e to the power minus x by theta now solve it what will happen uh, that 1 by theta come out to the operator and hold to the power n that means 1 n times you have multiplied that 1 by theta it's a simple uh, mathematical task you can easily perform it and e to the power this here uh, that xi are there so obviously the summation will be there so this is the likelihood function now what will be the log likelihood function you just need to take log on both sides so your likelihood function comes as 1 by theta to the power n e to the power minus summation of i equals to 1 to n xi by theta so now if i want to calculate the log likelihood function of this what do we need to do just take log on both side okay log on both side so what will that give you 
that give you that if you take the log on both side and simplify it so if you find it like this expression minus n ln of theta minus 1 by theta summation of xi so this is your log likelihood function now what do you need to find it out the best estimator of theta so for that what do we need to do for that what do we need to do we need to differentiate that log likelihood function and the log likelihood function with respect to the parameter or the unknown parameter which we need to find it out or which are going to calculate it and equate it to zero as simple as that so let's uh, do the task so if we differentiate this what we will get minus of n by theta so ln theta was there plus 1 by theta square and summation of x is equals to 0. Now if you simplify this what we will get theta by n is equals to 1 by theta square summation of x. So meanwhile we will get that theta is equals to nothing but 1 by n summation of i 1 to n x. So this is your estimator for theta which we have calculated using the concept of likelihood maximum likelihood function okay so that likelihood and maximum likelihood the log likelihood that will give you same uh, kind of results like the concept is here to maximize it and get the value of that unknown parameter now let's solve another problem so that this thing get more clear okay we will spend uh, time on that on this particular topic we will solve two or three problems then we will move to our next topic so that was that was the first problem okay so now the second problem what that second problem says again find the maximum likelihood estimator of theta based on a random sample size n and the pdf of the random variable is given and it has only one parameter so the pdf of x so if x of x that means the random variable x follows this pdf theta x to the power theta minus 1 for the range of 0 to 1 now we need to find out the best estimate of theta and based on the likelihood estimator or the maximum likelihood concept so first what do we need to do First step always like we need to find out the likelihood function that means we need to uh, formulate the likelihood function based on the function or the pdf whichever is given so here the pdf is given as theta x to the power theta minus 1 for the range of 0 to 1 right so what will be the likelihood function for this is nothing but uh, pi operator 1 to n your theta x to the power theta minus 1 so if you you know simplify it what will get theta to the power n here the pi operator will remain here 1 to n and x i to the power theta minus 1 so that was your likelihood function likelihood function based on your samples right now what do you need to do you need to find out the log likelihood function so what will be the log likelihood function take log on both side so and simplify it so if you take log on both side and simplify it what will give that log likelihood function comes as n ln of theta plus that theta minus 1 comes out uh, from that summation operator and we are left with summation of ln of xi now the next task is to find out the best estimator of theta right so we have the likelihood function we have the log likelihood function now we need to maximize it right how we can do it just differentiate that log likelihood function with respect to the unknown parameter so here the unknown parameter is the theta so equate uh, the differentiate with respect to theta and equate it to zero so let's uh, perform the task like we already have calculated the log likelihood function so what do we need to do we need to differentiate this log likelihood function with respect to theta so what do we, what that gives if we uh, perform the differentiation so here we have n ln of theta so that will become n by theta 
plus here we have like theta minus 1 and 1 summation operator okay so uh, that theta that will give you 1 minus 1 that means that will that part will nullify and we will left over i equals to 1 to n ln of xi so if we simplify it and that is equals to 0 we need to equate it to 0 so now if we need to uh, simplify this if we if, if we want to simplify this we uh, find out the uh, best estimate for that theta value so what will be the best estimate of the theta value that will be nothing but minus of n divided by summation of i equals to 1 to n ln of xi clear so by this way we can formulate the log likelihood function and from that uh, log likelihood function we can calculate the uh, best estimate of a parameter okay so uh, for this problem do you have any doubt so you can ask me or or we can solve some more problems like on log likelihood estimator how to find out that estimates so here uh, here we have that pdf of the random variable which follows the uh, some distribution and who which have only one parameter and that is theta and we have find out the best estimate for that theta using the log likelihood operator clear okay let's solve one more problem then we will move to our next topic so here again we have a random variable x and which follows uh, that distribution like the pdf of this random variable is also given and which tells that the pdf the if the range is within 0 to 1 the pdf will take like if x of x the value that means the random variable x follows this pdf and within that range we will have this value otherwise we will have the zero value and the question says find out the likelihood function then find out the log likelihood function and find out the maximum likelihood estimator of theta three parts are there so let's quickly you know solve part by part so likelihood function we have seen how to formulate the likelihood function it's nothing but you need to multiply your pdf and that is simply done by l of theta is equals to using an pi operator just few times back we have seen and clear these concepts how we can use that pi operator so one to n we have the pdf and the pdf is nothing but theta plus one x to the power theta so this is your likelihood operator likelihood operator okay now what is the log likelihood operator find the log likelihood function this is the likelihood function that means we just multiply the pdf of the samples from one to how many samples we have right now how we can calculate the log likelihood function so take log on both sides so if we talk like uh, take log on both sides what we'll have a log theta will become uh, here we can uh, simplify this operator also pi operator if we simplify this what will happen that theta plus one come outside the pi operator and to the power n value that will give that means that subscript or to the power n will that times that thing get multiplied and we have within that pi operator we have xi of theta and this is our likelihood function now what will be the log likelihood function take log on both sides so if we talk uh, take log on this side what we will get we'll get nothing but n that n comes uh, before the log and log theta plus one plus theta and if we take log that multiply that pi sign or that multiply sign will become the summation sign right that, that is the basic mathematics one to n ln of xi so this is your log likelihood function log likelihood function so to find out the log likelihood function second problem is already solved now one more problem is there like find out the maximum likelihood estimate of theta we have found out the likelihood function we have found out the log likelihood function now how we can find out the maximum estimate of theta what do we need to do 
we need to differentiate this log likelihood function with respect to the unknown parameter and equate it to zero to get the maximum likelihood estimator of theta. So let's quickly solve it. That means what we need to do, we need to differentiate that with respect to theta and we need to equate it to zero. That will give us the best estimate of theta. So let's quickly solve it. Then we uh, have that best estimate. So here, uh, I uh, have done the differentiation. So if you uh, if you solve this, so what we will get is nothing but n divided by theta plus 1 is equals to minus summation of i is equals to 1 to n ln of xi. Now what you need to look for or what you are looking for, you are looking for the theta. Just you need to solve theta. So if you simplify this equation, you will find it out that theta is nothing but minus n summation of i is equals to 1 to n uh, log of xi and summation of uh, 1 to n ln of xi and if you further simplify it i know if uh, some options are there you can uh, you have to uh, go for the simplification and look for the option which options is you know more uh, more more uh, closer to your values then you need to select it accordingly so this is the best estimator of theta so what we have learned till now just quickly quickly just quickly uh, recapitulate it then we will solve other problems like what do we solve today just just quickly go through that portion so first we have solved uh, problems related to moment generating function right so moment generating function we have discussed about the moment generating function first what is the moment generating function it's nothing but uh, the expectation of this finite series and from the moment generating function how we can find out the moments is nothing but if we have the moment generating functions then you need to differentiate the moment generating function with respect to s and take the value at s equals to zero which will give you the moments about origin and we have solved problems a few problems like for continuous random variable we have solved problems how to calculate the moment generating function and from there we can find out the moments like the central moments and the moment about origins. So here we have solved so many problems today. Like first for the continuous case we have solved. Then we have went through the discrete case. Here we have solved for a discrete random variable how to uh, generate the moment generating function and from that moment generating function how to calculate the moments. So these things we have solved. And we have solved few more problems uh, related to that. Like for binomial distribution solved. Can you get these beneficial slides? Obviously, man. This interaction sessions, like, why not you people are coming? Like, only two people are there. And uh, not only you will have the slides, you will have the recording video also. As well as the MATLAB, uh, you know, scripts. Uh, have you, have you uh, got the first week lecture video along with the uh, materials? Have you? Uh, Abdul? you can unmute yourself and okay no problem i will upload it but i yes, suggest, I will. yeah but i suggest please join the interaction session and please get your doubt clear during this 100 100 i actually got confused with the timing i'm really sorry uh, no 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 it's okay, it's okay it's no problem i can understand okay, okay. uh so uh, like we have already covered today's almost part uh one or few parts are there like, like these are beneficial for your uh, assignment solution and if you have some doubts regarding any kind of coding like this first two weeks videos uh, around revolving around the theory of probability we don't have that much of uh, you know MATLAB uh, algorithms and uh, so on but when the second order first order reliability problems will start we will just go to that instant uh, that, that that coding part that intense coding part okay will solve problems in MATLAB and I will give you the algorithms, no problems and how to solve them using MATLAB, I also do that. But these are particularly focusing on your assignments and your final examination. Like if you have gone through, uh, if you have gone through that uh, course content, you can see that uh, this is like a, a uh, advanced level of course. 
so that, that the people get confused which kind of question may come from this course right so very simple kind of questions like this if you go through that today's interaction session video i think you will able to solve all kind of assignment problems as well as your final year problems okay so then we have solved some problem related to uh, biasness and unbiasedness here for the uh, method of estimation so here we have solved so many problems today uh, just go through it and i will upload it today only no problem okay so now we will solve some problems related to related to okay this distribution okay let's solve this if we have a exponential distribution we know that pdf of exponential distribution now quickly find it out what will be the likelihood operator for this so it's nothing but you have to multiply this uh, pdf that how many times you have the samples and then we will have the likelihood operator and again from the likelihood operator we will get the parameter or the base estimate so for the method of estimation we have just covered this part like how we can find out the point estimate of some uh, population of a population from the sample size so point estimate part we have just covered where we have just seen the problems from method of moments first we have solved problems about biasness and unbiasedness like whom we call an unbiased estimator unbiased estimator when we call an unbiased estimator when the estimate of that parameter theta hat and the expectation of that estimator is equals to uh, that parameter then we can easily say this is an unbiased problem so these things have just done now method of moments how to solve using that method of moments we have solved some problems here okay and we have solved problems from maximum likelihood operator now one more topic is left here and that is the goodness of fit test so we will quickly cover that portion and then uh, we will go to matlab coding okay so here let's solve one another problem from the likelihood operator so likelihood operator is very simple thing to deal with so here the pdf is given unknown parameter theta you need to find it out the estimator for theta so first we need to set up the likelihood operator it's nothing but you just multiply this uh, pdf with respect to the samples that means you are just getting the likelihoods of these samples with respect to the given pdf so this will just solve it uh, the, the apply the pi operator over here and solve it you will get the likelihood operator take the log on both side you will get the log likelihood operator now if we in, in need to solve uh, for theta what you need to do you need to differentiate that log likelihood operator with respect to theta and equate to zero so here i have done this so this uh, just differentiate with respect to theta which will give like here when ln theta so it's simple derivations man so you can easily part from this so that theta the best estimate of that parameter will come as 1 by n summation of xi okay a uh, few more problems i think i have added like for normal distribution you can easily calculate the values and all these things so now we have one more topic left is like goodness of fit test so till now on theory of estimation what we have seen like theory of estimation first we have seen the point estimate point estimate means i just simplify these things like if we have a population where you know uh, which follows follows some distribution okay we have some distribution we have some uh, random variables it follows and which have some parameter unknown parameter theta now we need to find out the best estimate of theta based on some sample size say this is your samples like that samples are drawn from the population say x1 to x8 okay these are samples so our goal was to find out the best estimate of the theta so in point estimate what we just did we find out a value of that function just value 
in interval estimate we just find out the interval now in goodness of fit test what we do just we quickly go through that process now <clears throat> actually in goodness of fit test or we say this is hypothesis testing in principle if we say that in principle if we want to justify whether my samples are the true representative of the entire population or not okay so how we can uh, find it out like 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 if i go uh, to an example like uh, this this slide is taken from your course uh, slide so if we have you know in number of concrete cubes we have tested in lab and we have the fck values now if someone want to say that okay that samples whichever you have drawn or whatever you have you know you have performed the test in lab which distribution should fit that samples or simply we can say that if from that samples if i need to find out the best fit for the population we need to go for the goodness of fit test that means here we are not calculating a value or particularly a function which we call the estimator here we are directly proposing some hypothesis that okay my data will follow this distribution or not so there are like uh, different kind of hypothesis testing are there in statistics so parameter matlab parametric test we have like uh, z test is one of the uh, famous parametric test so this these are not covered i have seen that uh, in your course so only these two test chi square and case test these two test have been covered and these are very uh, very very popular and useful test like often in in, in our research uh, even uh, in every statistical problem first uh, thing comes our mind if we want to you know test some data based on some hypothesis we will go for chi square or case test basically chi square test okay so let's quickly go through that chi square test and how we can perform this chi chi square test and when we can say okay my data follows that distribution or not or simply says uh, this hypothesis is accepted or not so first uh, let's revisit the chi square distribution what is that chi square distribution we have already seen the standard normal distribution normal distribution and all these things so we know very well about standard normal distribution because on the previous class we have solved problems from the standard normal table uh, for standard normal distribution so chi square is nothing but the square of the standard normal variable okay and very interestingly it has two properties and based on that two properties we actually you know propose this distribution for the hypothesis testing so first first property says if a random variable with mean mu y and sigma i then if we square them up and sum them up then it will also give the same chi square distribution and the pdf of the chi square distribution is given this so if you, if you will find it in any standard books so what that says that if we have a distribution which follows the chi distribution and if we square them it will also follows the chi distribution with same uh, degrees of freedom first property that will help in determining the goodness of fit test or properties now the second property additive property this is very important this actually we will going to use in the uh, chi square testing so what that says that if we have in number of chi square variable and if you sum them up then the summation also will be the chi square variable and that particularly that uh, property we will going to use for the chi square test like on the next slide we will see how that chi square test can be performed so here like for the chi square test we need a finite number of data set like on which we are testing the hypothesis we have some data so the data should be finite in number it should not be infinite number of data sets are there so uh, that, that 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 hypothesis will get rejected every time yeah, i have seen it like uh, but thirdly we can say so we need to have some finite 
number of data sets clear now if that finite number of data sets we have then the chi square value we can easily calculate like this we 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 need to sum all the observed frequency and the expected frequency the difference between them and square them up divided by the expected frequency we will find out the chi square frequency like i will i will make it more clear like if we have say x1 x2 x3 dot 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 xn these are my observations okay so for example uh, we have taken 10 samples of concrete cube so 10 fck's will be there so for example 20 25 20 25 30 and so on up to say for example 20 or, or 20 point something are there so these are the observed values okay now what is the expected value this comes from the high that that we need to consider that my population will follow that distribution so for example i have considered that okay my uh, concrete cube test will follow the normal distribution so that ei expected uh, frequencies will come from that normal distribution pdf okay so once that chi values i will uh, just solve one problem that the thing will get more clear when we get the chi value this is your chi square value so chi square value we can find out from observed and expected frequencies now what we need to check if our chi value that means what we have if this is less than equals to that chi square of n and alpha what is that n this is the degree of freedom and this is the significance level significance level now, and these two things we can get from the chi table in a minute i will show what is that chi square table and how you can find out the n and alpha that means the degree of freedom and significance interval so degree of freedom is depend on the data set and significance interval we just check for like if we want to check for 1% significance interval or 5% significance level we can go and do it. so based on the requirement the significance level will change but the you know number of degrees of freedom will depend on the sample size so our hypothesis will accept it when our chi square value is less than or equals to what the chi value suggested from the chi square table with respect to that degree of freedom and with respect to uh, that significance level or level of significance and our hypothesis will reject it if the chi square value will get at then uh, that significance level and uh, that that degree of freedom corresponding to that so how we can perform this test how we can perform this test is very simple only we have three steps first we need to set an hypothesis that okay first we have some data sets x1 to xn so first we need to set an hypothesis that my data set will follow that distribution so that is called the null hypothesis that means if my random variable whatever we have uh, you know got from the samples that will follow the population distribution first the null hypothesis an alternative hypothesis if the hypothesis is rejected that means it will not follow that particular distribution which we have considered for our data set first we need to set an hypothesis the next step we need to find out the chi square value how we can find out the chi square value it is nothing but we need to find out the observed values observed values from where we can get the observed values from the samples say if we have 20 samples we can find out from there what is our observed frequency from where we can get the expected frequency here the hypothesis for the pdf whatever we have taken like if we consider my data will follow exponential distribution so that f x of x will be nothing but the pdf of the exponential distribution and we all know the, what is the pdf of the exponential distribution now once we have done with calculating the chi square value now what we need to find out what will be the degree of freedom for that chi square values like how we can find out that 
n this is the degree of freedom k minus p minus 1 what is that k that is the class or class or the class of the random samples class p that is the parameter how many parameter or how much parameter are there in your distribution which you have take as a null hypothesis and k this class can be calculated using that k is equals to 1 plus 3.3 log 10 base n that means to part to, to, to make the histograms if you see the plot of histogram so to identify or to quantify the interval and class of this histogram of different samples we need to calculate the k value from these equations okay now once we have all done like now i have that n value okay degree of freedom that now say for example i need to find out for one percent of significance level so for one percent of significance level and for degree of freedom n we can easily find it out the value chi square from the chi square table i will show you that chi square table in a minute so what are the steps it's three steps process but yes we cannot perform it in bare uh, like in in paper it can be solved it will take time but it can easily get solved in matlab i will show you the matlab coding for uh, some problems right now so three steps first we need to set an hypothesis for our data second we need to find out the chi square value based on observed and identified frequencies or expected frequencies then we need to check whether the null hypothesis is expected uh, accepted or rejected it will accept the uh, hypothesis if the chi square value is less than equals to the chi square value which we will get from the chi table with respect to the degree of freedom and the confidence interval so generally uh, significance level generally we test the chi square uh, values for 1% and 5% significance level so generally if that 1% and 5% values both got satisfied with the hypothesis then okay we say that uh, our data uh, uh, particularly follows that distribution whatever we have considered okay now let's quickly solve one problem then it will get more clear like here just uh, read this uh, tutorial a series of random sample data size of 40 okay so here we have 40 sample size of data total 40 samples of data are there okay here these are the datas and these datas are coming from an experimental outcome assume the probability distribution model is exponential distribution that means the our hypothesis is that okay our data will follow exponential distribution now check uh, the level of significance 5% and 1% like you need to check whether your uh, hypothesis that you have considered like your data will follow the exponential distribution just check and tell that for 5% and 1% significance interval will that data for the particular hypothesis is accepted or rejected so first what we need to do first step step one we need to set an hypothesis so what is our null hypothesis that means our data set will follow the set uh, distribution function so here the distribution function is exponential distribution what is the pdf of exponential distribution we all know it is nothing but lambda to the power minus lambda x for x greater than equals to zero right so this is our null hypothesis and null hypothesis will be accepted when when our you know chi square value whatever we have calculated based on this data will be less than equals to chi square value with that two significance level and with the degree of freedom so we will calculate all one by one so first we have the 40 number of samples so and and first we need to find out the sample mean what is the sample mean how we can find out the sample mean we have seen lot of time it's nothing but just add the sample divided by the total number of samples so it will give you 1.04 now for the 
for the exponential distribution what is the parameter lambda says lambda is nothing but 1 by 1 by x bar just we have solved a problem uh, related to moment generating function where we seen that the lambda parameter we can easily calculate it from like this 1 by x bar so for lambda we get the parameter here so we have the population parameter population mean and from population mean we have find out the parameter for our distribution which we have used for the null hypothesis now what do we need to do we need to find out k we need to find out p and calculate all the chi square values let's see first we need to find out the k how we can find out k k that means the interval of your bins of the histogram this is the histogram of the data whatever i have taken i will show you in a minute how to plot them so first we need to find out the k k 1 plus 3.3 .3 log 10 n n this is total number of data sets so we have 40 number of data sets so the interval comes as 7 now we need to find out the width of the bins like class this width from the class we need to find out the width of the bins where we need to put all the data this this is this come from the basic concept of the statistics like frequency distribution and histograms class how can find out the class how many you know uh, that width of the bins will be there so what do we need to find out we need to find out the value of maximum value of the data like what is the maximum out of that 40 so i think the maximum value of out of 40 is that 3 point this 3.44 so this is your maximum value and this is your minimum value so what do you need to do class means you need to find out the width of the histograms so maximum value minus the minimum value divided by number of intervals so we get the width of the bins like here look 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 that width of the bins we have you know put this data and and get the histogram now what do we need to do we need to perform the chi values so first class interval we have seven classes one two three four five six seven right and every class width is 0 0.5 so first we need to find out that how many data are less than of that 0 0.5 because our class interval is 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so like here in a bare hand or in bare eye we can see it but it is quite difficult to find out okay how many values are there which are less than of that 0.5 so i have found it out like not me it's madla find it out like 21 values are there okay so the observed frequency look now why the observed frequency that the my data which will fall less than 0.5 class interval we have 21 data now how we can find out the uh, expected frequencies is nothing but you need to multiply the number of data and you need to find out the area under that pdf up to x i minus 1 to x to x i that means you need to find it out uh, that the area under that probability density uh, distribution function from here 0 less than equals to x less than 0 0.5 so within that using an calculator you also can find it out so that value comes as 15.25 now what will be the chi square value it's nothing but observed frequency expected frequency by expected frequency and you will get this by this way you need to find out again how many data are within that interval 0 0.5 to 1 you will find four data this is our observed one now expected one what will be that your limit that limit will be x limit will be that means you you need to find out the area under the car from your 0 0.5 to 1 likewise 1 to 1 1.5 1 1.5 to 2 and greater than 3 whatever the range of the data is given we need to find it out then 
sum the observed frequency, sum the expected frequency, and we can calculate the chi square value total that 9.6519. Now, what will be the degree of freedom of this chi? Let's say k was 7 minus p here. How many parameters are there in an exponential distribution? Only one parameter that is lambda. So, 1 minus 1 that means 5. Now, degree of degree of freedom for this chi square value is 5. Now, we need to check for two confidence, two you know, confidence levels. One is 1% and one is 5% significance level. So, how I can get these two values like chi square of 5, this denotes your degree of freedom and one person this is the significance interval where from where i get these values either you can uh, get it from matlab or from chi table wait uh, i will show you the chi square table from where you can get these values uh, just just one second i will share this like just remember these values for five person uh, for degree of freedom five and one person how the values is 15.08 and five and degree of freedom five and five percent 11.07 just we will find it out from the table how we can find it out just wait uh, here is the chi table Yeah, is the screen visible? Is it visible? Okay, so from here you can get uh, the chi value corresponding to your degree. Like, like if you see the chi square value with you know uh, that significance levels are given here. So for degree of freedom 5. Here the degree of freedom is 5 and we need to find out for 5%. So here 5% is here. Look, so degree of freedom 5 and for 5% significance level, the value, chi-square value is 11.07. And now for 5 degree of freedom and for 1% value, 1%, so see why 1% is there here, 15.06. So you can directly find out from the table. Now, if this uh, some portion of the table is given and you need to find out, okay, what will be the chi-square value with respect to degree of freedom is given something and uh, the significance level is given something. So from this table, you can easily find out the chi-square value. Now we need to check that our calculated chi-square value are, you know, less than that. Uh, chi square value whatever we have got from the chi table is it satisfying our hypothesis or not so if we quickly go there okay so here we can see that the two values like 15.0863 from where we get it from the chi square table and for the five uh, that uh, you know degree of freedom and 5% confidence interval also this so our chi square value total chi square value comes as 9.6519 now for both the cases what is happening your chi square is less than equals to your for chi square 5 and 1% and also this two that means for two cases for the two cases for the above two cases our hypothesis is correct that means our data follows the exponential distribution now from this uh, you know histogram we can easily say okay this data is already following the exponential distribution look at the distribution it's exponential it's already exponential now if you perform the chi square test considering that this data will follow normal distribution obviously your hypothesis will fail you can perform it with normal distribution now uh, what i said like we can solve it using bare ends it will take uh, time but 
using MATLAB, I have added the MATLAB script here, uh, that code portion here. Also, I will, you know, uh, upload the script also along with the cement. So, in uh, that code, what we need to do? First, we'll load that observations. We need to set the significance level for which we need to test. Now, we need to set the parameter. So, for our problem, the parameter was 1. Now, uh, first, what we need to do? We just sort that observations, okay. Uh, why we need to sort that observation like we need to find out the minimum and maximum values all these things okay so now k we can find it out like 1 plus 3 log 3 10 base 1 we have seen it now uh, degree of freedom how we can calculate the degree of freedom k minus p minus 1 now we can find out the class and uh, the parameter of our distribution like class how we can find out the class just we have seen that we have to find out the maximum value of the observation and minimum value of the observation and we need to divide it with that k that uh, your classes or number of bins so then what do we need to do we need to perform the observed frequency here the observed frequencies are there like how much uh, that um, observed values lie within that interval of 0.5 to 0.1 or 1 to 1.5 and all these things now when we have done with the observed frequencies we we can calculate the expected frequencies and expected frequencies are come from the uh, distribution which we have considered here we have considered the exponential distribution so the expected frequencies will come from the cdf of the exponential distribution while if i consider it is a normal distribution then uh, we need to calculate the expected frequencies with respect to the normal frequency normal distribution now here uh, the expected frequency portion uh, is covered now total like ei are stored here now we can easily uh, calculate like our chi square value for i is equals to 1 to k we just need to perform a loop for y minus ei divided by ei uh, upon square so chi square value will be sum of that cs value now we need to check that chi square value is more than your uh, chi value with respect to that degree of freedom and significance interval or not if yes then obviously it will follow uh, our hypothesis and if not then it will not follow that hypothesis so if you just copy and paste it code and just load this data set you will find that it will print that okay my distribution follows or not it will directly source it. i will show you the matlab in an editor also so don't worry so it's the basic like uh, concepts if the problems from here uh, will come like that okay um, when this uh, chi square test will fail where the hypothesis will fail this kind of like uh, where maximum and minimum values are provided or n is provided find out the k so k you can find out like here i have added the formula for calculating the beans one plus 3.3 log 10 upon n so this kind of small uh, problems may come from here but for the statistical testing purpose or you are testing some data and try to fit some distribution this chi distribution you need to perform in matlab and you need to do the coding also matlab had some inbuilt uh, uh, like function chi to gof you can uh, perform this also uh, to get uh, the desire to check whether your hypothesis is uh, uh, hypothesis is, is, is accepted or not so here another problem i have added here also i added that matlab coding for that problem also like here we have a data set uh, 200 samples are there and and say uh, this problem says like check where that 200 samples of the data sets are following normal distribution with significance level of 5% and 1% or not so for normal distribution what do we know about the normal distribution it has two parameters mean and standard deviation for the exponential distribution what do we say say that we have only one parameter that is lambda so for here we first need to calculate the mean and standard deviation of these two parameters then we need to find out the k that means interval then we need to find out the class then we perform the test like we need to segregate the data as per the interval class from there we can get the observed frequency that means how many data are there within that interval now here we have 
normal distribution so from the normal curve we can calculate the expected frequencies it will nothing but you need to you know calculate the area under the pdf that means directly uh, you can get it from the cdf up to that portion okay so for this data also we have seen that here look here what will be the degree of freedom for this here the k is 9 how many parameters for this normal distribution are there two sigma square and mu and sigma square so you need to remember while calculating the degree of freedom for the chi square distribution you need to first remember how many parameters are there or how many parameters for which we need to test this hypothesis and one so by this way we can find out whether a data set uh, or whether a sample of data are too representative of a population or not. So if we have a big large number of data we generally perform the chi-square test and if we have a small number of data uh, we have you know case test, Kolmogorov uh, Smirnov test. So here uh, this case test actually use the CDF instead of PDF. Like what it does it actually take the PDF the or the or the difference between the PDF that means the PDF of your from your hypothesis and PDF from your observations and take the maximum value of that and based on that maximum value we need to find out the case value and again when we find out the case value based on some um, uh, level of significance and degree of freedom we need to find out whether our hypothesis is accepted or not similar as your chi uh, test. So here I have added uh, one data set here for the case test along with uh, the MATLAB code here. Uh, this test actually cannot you perform using bare hand like look for 40 data sets if you want to calculate in bare end you will need to calculate 40 times here look. So it will be quite difficult for us to solve in bare end but in MATLAB truly we can easily solve it like uh, like if I show you the MATLAB code of this, so it will get more clear. One second. I just go to the MATLAB editor. Uh, is the editor is visible to you? Like for the first test, what we have done here, we just load the observation data. Observation data we have stored here in an uh, txt file. You can load it through, you know, mm, your uh, Excel file also. So just uh, the command will be different. Then we just put the uh, level of significance here. Then uh, parameter of the distribution then what do we do that uh, we sort the observation we find out the length of the observation and we find out the k after finding out the k we find out the sample mean so here the sample mean will be nothing but it will follow the exponential distribution so, so the sample mean will be uh, some that x bar will be sum of that observed frequency divided by n now degree of freedom and class also we have calculated here the observed frequencies are calculated based on the class and intervals. Now here that uh, expected frequencies are calculated based on our uh, our distribution. So here the exponential distribution were there. So for the exponential distribution the class uh, and the frequencies are given. Now finally the chi-square values are calculated. Now chi-square values here uh, it will print if your uh, chi-square value is less than uh, that um, chi-square value corresponding to the chi-square table value. So it will give you that uh, okay your null hypothesis is rejected or accepted. So just if you run it you will see what will happen. Yeah. So it will give you result like uh, EIs are there. Now it says okay our hypothesis was that uh, to test our uh, exponential distribution that follows that exponential distribution or not. So it says okay the chi-square value for given data is that. 
and for chi square value for 5% uh, significance level is 11 and this is 15 already you have seen from the chi table matlab also has that inbuilt function to calculate the chi value so for both the cases the data follows the exponential distribution clear for the normal distribution you can also calculate for the normal distribution also so for the normal distribution what do you need to do you need to change your observation data and here you need to change the exponential to normal so by this way you can easily perform one uh, test uh, here so here look uh, this was our frequency distribution whatever we have seen now these two are the empirical and theoretical uh, functions of cdf okay these are like uh, we have only 40 samples so that's why the empirical CD, uh, cdf look like that but uh, it's still follows the uh, exponential distribution and also we have find out the uh, that CDF uh, from the chi to GF command. So we can see that there is a good agreement between these two. But okay, if we have large number of data, this uh, you know this curve will also uh, follows this uh, you know um, the the theoretical PDF curve. So likewise, I have uh, added these problems uh, of uh, that uh, for the uh, uh, like exponential and also for this. Uh, normal also normal distribution whatever that uh, problem i have shown to you uh, in the ppt so these two things i will upload it and so you will run it you will also give that uh, your distribution will uh, follow the normal distribution here for both the cases that 200 for the 200 samples it will also follow the chi square distribution this this is for the normal case okay so i will upload these two codes along with that uh, video just uh, you know, uh, get, take some time, go through it carefully. I hope uh, you will understand it. If you will not, just uh, on the next class you ask me, I will explain the code line by line or anything in uh, which you have doubt. Uh, then we can solve it. I, and we will have that MATLAB sessions where we will solve that codes uh, line by line. You can see it and you can also have the clear understanding of it how to solve it and not but for the exam purpose and for the uh, you know for 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 your uh, assignment purpose you don't need to you don't need to um, you know solve using the matlab okay so do you have any queries you can ask me or we can conclude our session today abdul from where you uh, you are from Uh, are you there? Okay, Chandan. You have been there throughout the class. So I hope you, uh, you have understood what I tried to say and uh, how these problems can be solved. Okay, so if you have no queries, so we can conclude our session here and we will meet uh, next week i will upload these videos along with the uh, the, the ppts and that uh, matlab portions just go through it it will be helpful and and i suggest that uh, try to solve some problems using matlab like uh, i have given to you two uh, data sets for two testing so you can check it whether other distribution will fit into you can fit into that data or to that distribution or not or whatever you can do with that distribution you can check just play with that uh, matlab script you will understand how to you know uh, how to how to solve that problem there okay so if you have uh, no doubts and no queries so we can conclude here so do you have any great so thank you we will meet again on next sunday 3 to 5 pm